topographic maps can be difficult to get your hands on. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get free, customized by you, topographic maps. Stay tuned. In the last video, we talked about how using street maps, Google Earth, and topographic maps could enhance your outdoor experience, give you more confidence to explore further, and keep you safe. Maybe up till now you've been able to find topo maps on your computer or smart devices, but getting your hands on a good and accurate paper map can be a bit daunting. If you're fortunate enough to have a Division of Natural Resources field office in your town, that has a map store, you can purchase maps for $8 to $10 each. Or you can order them from the USGS.com map store for about the same cost. Another option is to use the link I shared with you last video and download a PDF and print it. I'll put that link below in the description. The USGS put together a national map. It's a patchwork of maps like this that cover the entire country. Those are the maps that you can download and print. USGS maps are good, but they have two problems. They can be dated, and the map you get is the map you have. Let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. We're going on a river camping expedition, and as you can see, it took three maps to cover the stretch of river we'll be traveling. As you can see from the bottom of the two maps, we'll be traveling back and forth from one map to the other again. That's a problem. I had to purchase three maps for this adventure and it will be inconvenient at least. And at worst, having to go back and forth between maps increases the chance of error. There's a better way. In today's video, I'll be covering a tool for you for free to create and customize your own topographic maps. If there are page breaks, you put them where you want them. You can add your own routes, points of interest, detailed information about the area and environment you'll be traveling on. And to top it all off, you can print a hard copy to take, export it to Google Earth, and even download it to your smartphone and GPS. And it's free. The tool is CalTopo. It's an online service that lets you create your own custom maps. Now, I'm not affiliated with CalTopo in any way. I'm just a really satisfied user of the service and I'm blown away how useful it is for land navigation. So let's take a look. All right, let's get started. Let's just go type into your search bar, CalTopo. And that'll bring you up to this. Just hit um, caltopo.home and let's just move that right down here and I'm going to zoom out just a little bit and I just wanted to see, show you that um, Between different kinds of maps, there are many places in the world. Um, we're going to be using the seven and a half minute maps, and for at least right now, and you can see that we've got maps basically covering most of North America. We have different style maps. As we start to zoom in a little bit to Utah's, which is where we're going to do it here, you can kind of see that uh, there's a patchwork of maps. And what that is, is that's just reflecting that, um, to see the different color shadings and things like that. That's just reflecting that those maps were collected and put together into a tapestry of the national map. Those maps represent different origins. Um, data was added to these maps at different points. The creation and the publication dates were not all the same. That's why it looks like that. However, with this tool, we kind of solve that problem because we have taken that map. And um, today we're going to be looking at 
an area that's very dear to me. It's in my backyard, basically, and it's um, the High Uinta Mountains. And so um, we're going to be using the Mirror Lake area. So all you have to do is come up to this little search bar at the top and type in whatever you're looking for. But today we're going to be looking for Mirror Lake, Utah. So we're going to go to Mirror Lake, Utah. So I want to just point out, and I'm going to move my little camera over to the other side because that over here, we've got what we're looking at here is the USGS maps. And you can see that there's a certain quality. It looks like a USGS map. We can use the Map Builder Topo, which is going to give you a slightly different feel. However, this is Forest Service land. And so one of the best looking maps, I think, is the National Forest Service background. So we're going to start with a base layer. So we have several different choices. We've got the Forest Service, which you're looking at right now, the USGS 7.5 or 1 to 24,000 scale map that we were looking at in the last um, video. We could do an aerial topo hide, basically a uh, satellite view that we could overlay onto our map. And um, we can also pick slope angle shading. Now, why would this be important is that any time that we have avalanche danger, and recently it's been high, it's not as bad as it was. But, you know, you have to really be careful of slopes that are over 30 degrees. And if you just look at this shading, it's marked off in the yellow. Any slope that's yellow is 27 to 29 degrees. As we get into that orangey color, that's 30 to 31. A dark orange is 32 to 34, and so on and so forth, with red being 35 to 45 and purple being 46 to 50. So you can see the slope angles or when avalanche danger is very high, um, slopes to stay away from. The other thing that's really nice about that is if you see these extreme slope angles and you're trying to pick a path, you might want to, it gives you information that lets you know that you either need to stay away from them or that you're going to be traversing them and doing some sort of switchback. Okay, so over here, on the right hand side is where we can add things to our map. Let's go first, go back to the Forest Service. So continuing along on this side, here are some overlays that we can put. Think of it as a, a transparency that you just put over the top that just adds more information. You could look at, you can make that slope angle one we were just looking at. Um, or we could use, I like this one, the weather shading. So what it can do is, and it takes just a minute, but it can show you what the 24 hour low was and the colors are in the low thirties and, uh, in the tens still, well, you know, if you notice we're at about nine to 11,000, not 12,000 feet on the geography of this map here. Another one that might be useful for you is the sun exposure map. So today you can kind of see the purple areas are areas that are in the shade. And so anywhere else has got sun exposure. For the purposes of this video, we're just going to keep it to the base layer of the Forest Service map. Let's just do a quick overview of some of the features of topographic maps. We're going to zoom in just a little closer. So remember, from our last video, we spoke about how these lines are called contour lines. The heavy dark ones are called index lines. And these lines are 40 feet apart in elevation. So for each one of these lines, we're climbing 40 feet. And you can see that the lines are very close together right through here. And that just means that 
we're gaining elevation in a much shorter distance. Now over here, you can see that those contour lines are more spread out. This tells us that we are in a much more gentle slope. Top graphic map also gives us references to some other features. So you can see this red line that travels right along here is a road. These other dark gray dotted lines are other kinds of roads, just less developed. This line that goes right up along here, that just divides the counties. But you can see in this area what an in, a, incredibly adventure-rich place this is. Look at all those peaks, all those lakes. You know, you can see by the green that that's um, cover. That's it's designating that that's forest cover. And then where it's not green, where it's white, that means that's actually there's no canopy, no cover from the forest because you're above the tree line. And so look at some of these heights that we have on our map here. This is the hike we're going to be um, laying out today. This one is 11,943 feet right next to it. 11,708 and just over here 11,206 so we're going to be um, doing some hiking and you know you can look right down here for the trailhead that we're going to be working with we'll be starting at about 10,600 feet so this hike is going to be up there so if you look right up here in the corner you can see some indication of a lot of information about points on the map and it's using the point of your mouse so here you can look at the peak that we're going to work on for our hike today bald mountain you can see that we're at 40.69.8 40.6985 degrees north and 110.9029 degrees west we are at 11,000 827 feet so I must not be pointing right at the top of the mountain there's 11,939 feet and those are um, the other numbers are some grid coordinates all right let's begin to customize our map let's add something you can add a new object by clicking on this or coming up to the top for right now why don't we just click on add and we're going to add a marker and if you see that there, there's a marker right here on our screen, all we have to do is just drag that to our trail head. And, you know, we can do a couple of things with this. We can label it. We'll call it bald mountain. And look at 11,943 feet. And that little tiny flag, I'd like it to be a little bit bigger. So let's come from normal. Let's move it to 1.5. All right. So we've got a light blue flag right here. We can edit this. Let's say we don't like blue. We want to change it. You just click on edit, change the color, and let's make it red. So now we have a red flag and I don't, let's not use a flag. Let's use, come down here. Let's use this. Uh, this location indicator. There we go. I like that. That's for, to mark our start of our trailhead. So we're happy with that. Now with this, we can come up and we can click on our starting point. It'll give us information, position and elevation. So it gives us all of our coordinate positions in UTM, national grid and latitude and longitude. But at the top, we have our elevation, which is 10,778. And our slope angle to start is 15 degrees. So that's great. So we've now added an object right over here to our map. We can edit that. We can click here or we can edit it by clicking on this and then selecting edit. Let's come down here and add it from here. And we're going to add a line. What's awesome with Caltopo is that as soon as you click on that line, it highlights existing and known popular trails and this hike we're going on today happens to be a very popular trail 
And so we can just click on that and we'll trace a line. And just as we go up, in this case, well, it'll stick. It's sticky. And we'll just trace that line up and it will go right up to the summit here and double click to end that. So we've now laid out our, let's zoom in just a little bit. We've now laid out and it's not exactly correct, but it's following the path and uh, you're not going to get lost if you follow that line. A couple of things about that line now we can do, just like we did with the marker, is we can click on that line and we can do all sorts of things. We can edit the line. So let's say we want that line just a little bit more pronounced. We can make it a little wider by increasing the weight. Let's say we want our hike to be in green. We can change the um, opacity of our line, and we can even change the style. And we can pick all of these fun things. But for the sake of this, we're just going to leave it at a line. We can also label this line. So let's come up and edit it one more time so we know what it is. Bald Mountain Hike. We've got the Bald Mountain Hike right there. Or we can maybe say how long it is. Well, how do we know how long that hike is? Once again, click on that. And let's look at profile for the next thing we can look at. And here it is. This is your hike laid out. Now, understand this isn't exactly correct because there's a vertical exaggeration just so that they can make it fit on your computer screen. The vertical is not uniform with this. So what the slope looks like has been exaggerated by 0.6 times. Nice thing is, I'm going to go close this right here just so you can watch. As I take my mouse, watch this. Let me zoom out a little bit. You can watch a little dot from the start. It's going to climb. And as you look, you can see that as I move through the hike, the dot is following the hike. And if you look over in this small window right down here, you can see that it's following the elevation and how far into the hike you are. So we can come up here all the way to the summit. And you can see that our hike today is going to be 1.3 miles. We are going to, through the course of our hike, we're going to gain 1,210 feet, and we, at some point, will drop 72 feet, which is insignificant compared to how much we're going to gain. Okay, so that's one thing. Let's look at our line again. Now let's come here to terrain statistics. So it gives us our minimum, average, max, and our delta, or our change in elevation. Here, it gives you the slope angles we'll be looking at during our hike. And down here at the bottom, it goes from 0 to 60 degrees. And there is no part of this hike that's under 6 degrees. There's about 20% that's between 6 and 12. Another 20% or so that's between 12 and 18. Then it's most of our hike, we're going to be between 18 and 36% slope, which is a strenuous hike. So it gives you some information on whether or not we should do this hike. Now, one thing is it gives you an idea that there's a, a stretch right here at the beginning that's going to be, a, because of the color, that's going to get this most strenuous part. Then it's a little bit less. Then it's strenuous again. And then near the summit, we have another stretch. It's showing you over here what the land cover is. And most of our hike 
is going to be above the tree line, so it's going to be barren. Um, just some shrub and some rock. So be aware that in the summer when we're planning our hike, for example, we've got sun exposure so that we'll be in the sun most of the hike, if not all. So let's close that out. Another thing it'll do is it'll say, um, it'll give you an idea of your hike time. And in this case, it's saying that for hiking, you've got 1.3 hours. And you can do all this other stuff, but I don't want this video to go so long. This is what's so fun about Caltapo is, and I want to cancel that. What's so fun about Caltapo is that you can spend hours, if you're into this sort of thing, planning your adventures, really scoping it out and getting an idea just filled with information about that. So we know that this hike is 1.3 miles. Let's click on our line again and edit. Now, we already know from looking at our hike that uh, it's 11.93, but I think what's more important for the line is to know that it's 1.3 miles. So we're going to click OK. Now you can see that Bald Mountain, we've, we've listed it at 11,943. We can see that right up here. But if we're looking at this hike maybe months or years later and we want to take this hike, we've got information that we can just click on. We can go through and once again take a look at, hey, would this be a fun hike? And then you can make some decisions based on that information that we looked at. There's all sorts of other objects that we can put on the map. And what I'd like to do is, oh, now you don't really need to do, you don't need to log in, but if you want to save this map to Caltapo, you can save it to their free account. Now they have free and paid versions. The paid versions, I mean, for those of you that are even more geeked out on this kind of stuff than I am. Those are for you. That's great, especially if you're if you use it for a living, if you're into search and rescue or something like that. But for most of us, the free account's going to be more than adequate. But all you have to do is log in with your email, your Google or your Facebook, or there's several other options. And then you can save the map and come back to it later. There, you can save maps as being public, and you can save a bunch of those. That way, other people can um, use that information. Or you can save your maps as private. Now, with the free account, you can only save five, I think, uh, maps as a private. Up here at the very top, Caltapo, you've got your user's guide, a blog, a guided tour. So if you're um, struggling with getting through this, Come up here and just click on the Caltapo logo, and you can do all this stuff, and that will help out a ton. All right, so this video's already got really long, but I, you know, I could spend hours, hours, and hours just playing in here, looking at new places to explore, have so much fun. I really do enjoy this stuff. So I do apologize that it's gotten a little bit longer, but I do have to show you. I've taken a previous trip, and I just want to lay that out for you and how I was able to customize this trip to make it really work for me. You can see I've got all of these elements of my uh, adventure over here on the left-hand side. Now you can see here I've got our bald mountain hike. It's all laid out, and this time... I've got a, a red finish line flag at the top. If you made it that far to the top of that hike, more power to you. That's a strenuous hike. Um, not only strenuous, but you're going to be up there at 12,000 feet when you get close to the top. And for a lot of people, um, that can be a little bit difficult to gather your oxygen up that high. Well, let's move on. So I decided I added and wanted to just show you how quickly and how really useful this Caltapo tool is. So starting at the same trailhead, we're just going to add day one. 
And you can look at that and like it's I call this hike the lake hike because as you can see, we are going to through the course of this hike, we are going to camp, but we're going to walk by probably 25 lakes during our journey. So I've, this is leg one, and you can see I've called this lake hike one right through here. Now, if we click on this hike, we can get some information about this hike. So let's go to a profile. You can see this entire hike is um, day one is almost five and a half miles. So we'll call that good for day one. But it looks like it's going to be a pretty gentle downslope because we're going to only gain at parts of the hike 487 feet. But overall, we're going to drop 1,423 feet. So you can see the range as our minimum height elevation we're going to be is 96.53 and our max is going to be 107.65, which is right at our starting point. So you can just see by this profile line that we are going to be heading downhill the entire time. Knowing that, that's why I planned a five mile hike carrying a pack for the first day is that we have a relatively gentle slope except for this part right here heading downhill. So let's close out of that. We'll add in our day two. So from day two, we're going to go from our camp. Oh, by the way, we're going to camp right up here. See the little tent? And just to click on the tent. We're going to be camping at an elevation of 9,826 feet. And you can see our campsite right there broken down into all the popular coordinate systems. So now our day two hike is going to be a different animal than our day one hike. We are going to start the hike with an ascent. So I'm going to look at the profile of this first part of day two. And you can see it starts rather gentle. But then throughout, we are going to be climbing all the way up to what's called the notch right up here at 10,625. So all that elevation we dropped yesterday, we're going to gain it back by the first part of our day two hike. So let me close this window. And I've just thrown some information in there. Let's look for that. Um, Let's back up a little bit. So I've put our start, which is right there. We've used the black flag. And you know what? Along the way on day one, I decided let's build in some rest stops and some chances to take some photos. So I added some photo stops at two of the lakes. And then up here, a rest stop before we made our final venture to our campsite. And so we've got the first part of day two to here. Now, what I've done is depending on how we feel, I finished the hike with this blue line to come back to our ending point right here, which is our finish line. And I put, there we go, a little orange flag, but a slightly longer route back that allows us to see more lakes, and that's the purpose of this hike, is to see as many lakes as we could, is to take this yellow line that's a half a mile longer and come down and visit all of these lakes. So one thing I did is I added these two lines right over here. If you can zoom in, this is a red line I overlaid onto our map that's true north. This line is our magnetic north. So when I use the compass, I can lay the I can make the edge of my compass parallel to this line or this line, depending on which I want to use. We'll cover more of that in next week. I did it again a little bit later. So I put another true north line at our end and a magnetic north line. So just about anywhere we are on our map, I can reference those two lines 
as my magnetic and so I can orient this map in the field. But you can see there's so much information on this hike. Now, what I wanted to show you was we are going to export this map. But we're going to print it. So we want to print it to a PDF or a JPEG. It doesn't really matter. So give it a second. And here is a red shape that we can drag to anywhere on our map. So let's just move our map up a little bit. And let's move this so that we get a good view with enough detail for our day one. Then, you know what? Let's look over here. A couple of things we could do. We can add a page. So what we now can do is add a page here. Now what that's done is we can adjust those pages. So just grab the handle in the middle and scooch that up a little bit. There's a technical term for you. And we'll go up that way. It covers our um, site. Now I'm going to overlap these two just a little bit. Now we our campsite and our finish line don't fit on the one page. So why don't we just grab a corner and just drag that down just a little bit. We'll grab a corner, drag that down just a little bit. So let's grab one more page. I think it would be useful to have kind of an overview map for our the entire area. And you know, just what if we wanted to take a side trip or something like that? It will it would allow us to do it and have more information so that if we went off trail, we could have the information that we've worked so hard to make on our map. Now, you know what? This this last one, wouldn't it be better? We're, we've got all this space that we're not camping and hiking in. Let's turn this last page to landscape. And I did that right over here from number three. Well, anyway, so we're going to generate. Hit this button right over here. Generate PDF. Watch how cool this is. This is what you can take in the field, either in the paper version or you can download this to your um, smart devices, GPS. I'm a paper person. I really do prefer paper. I do download it to my uh, GPS too. So we've got kind of an overview map. I'm going to just flip that that one. So this is just an overall, even bigger than the pages I selected. We've got this one. Let's flip that one more time. There's our day one, most of our day one hike. It includes our bald mountain ascent. And here is our camp for day two, our first part of day two. And then option one and option two for coming back. And here, let's just rotate that one, is our overview map. And you can see it's got our scale. I've got our north and magnetic north down here. So that's how super useful we can print that, have a nice copy, use a color copy, and you've got a nice version for your trip. All right, one of the last really cool features that I've got to share with you is this is awesome. So we're going to come up here to the export, right? And come down here and export KML files for Google Earth. You have some other choices, your GPX files for GPS. Um, just we can copy to a new map. Anyway, we're going to export this as a KML for Google Earth. Watch. We're just going to export all of the things that we added to the map and come over here to export. And I'm just going to export that to my downloads for right now. And then we'll come over here to Google Earth. I've already opened it up just for the sake of time. But this icon right here is called Projects. So open that up. And you can see that just a minute ago, I had opened this and then I had a system crash. Well, things like that happen. So let's open that. 
and you can see it's going to zoom me right into the area superimposed on a Google Earth projection. So now we can use the power of Google Earth to kind of preview and look at what our hike's going to look like. So there, there we are at the top of the notch. And then we come down. We'll have a choice between where we're going to be going. We can take the yellow route or the blue route. And then we end up at this finish line right here. So there is our map superimposed. Oh, let's go back over here and take a look at our um, bald mountain hike. So you can see, yes, that's real steep going up that way. And then we're going to climb right on up to the, the top of bald mountain. I just think that's an awesome feature for previewing and planning your, your trip. So I hope this tool gives you some valuable information and just it's a starting point we only scratch the surface well i think once if you're into this sort of thing you get into this you you get going on caltopo you could be lost in it for hours there's so many more things that you can do with this incredible app and once again i'm not affiliated with caltopo it's just something i've discovered that i think i would really have to share with you so that you can benefit from all the things that Caltopo can do. Route planning with a good topo map is one of the keys to being a good land navigator. It gives you confidence, it lets you explore further, and you're much less likely to get lost. If you're worried about spontaneity, don't be. You can go to the detail I went through in today's example, or you could build a map with just points of interest and geographic information and have fun exploring with that map. The map will help you make smart choices as you wander and then get you back safe. If you've missed the first two videos in this series, I'll include the links to them up here and in the description down below. In the first video, we learned how to think like a navigator. We covered exercises to help with directional awareness. We worked on being more aware with our surroundings with things like landmarks and features and being aware of time and distance traveled. We also worked on the skill of building a mental map. In the second video, we saw how combining the tools of a street map, Google Earth, and topographic maps to plan and preview our adventures. The next video will introduce the compass. A good compass combined with a good custom-made topo map, along with the skills and knowledge you're mastering, are a very powerful and effective combination. Keep practicing and have fun navigating I'm John with Let's Go Now Adventures, and I'll see you on the next adventure.